Fast Times at Richmond High is a film that I and many of us grew up. Uh, it was our zeitgeist. It really was at the at the core of so many things uh, at that at that phase and age as a person and as a performer. And I grew to not only love the people that created the story, but the actors involved in it. Cut to 30 some odd years later, I call Sean Penn up and say, you know, we're all stuck in this quarantine. There's no big summer movie coming. Let's do something that lifts people's spirit. Let's do something that maybe puts some eyes and some enlightenment into some of the great things that we're affiliated with and let's have a blast. And then he said, with what? <laughs> and I said, I want to do Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And I couldn't believe it, but he said, well, let's do it. Let's go for it. That's amazing. I mean, so Sean Penn's involved in this. So many huge names. Did you call them each personally? How did you get everyone to get involved? I mean, you're talking about like something that started, uh, I guess I started working on it around uh, May. And very quickly, it was like, I'm texting Jennifer Aniston. And I'm giving her the download on how I want the event to go and what is feeling alive. It's a, it's a virtual table read. Um, we've all been a part of great table reads. I've done stuff with uh, Jason Reitman or we'll read a comic book or a play. Over the years, a lot of us have done these and they're always great because they're unexpected. There are, as we, you'll probably be, holy shit moments. Uh, anytime you see one of these table reads. So very quickly, everybody was, getting other people on board. Oh my God, I am so stoked for this. Now, was anyone hesitant? Was everyone ready to jump on board? It was really convincing involved. Yeah, me. <laughs> I was the one who was like, okay, woo, all right. If I'm gonna wrangle this and get everybody together in a, in a loving, uh, you know, multi-box screen, how can we make it as seamless and, and uh, as organic as possible so everyone can just come and play, right? Um, so the pressure really more than anything is probably on me. These guys just need to show up and just have at it. Um, so Sean Penn is involved, but correct me if I'm wrong, he's not gonna be Spicoli or how is this decided? So Sean made it very clear early on. He said, my, my days as Spicoli uh, have uh, come and gone. I wanna hand them, you know, the baton, the, you know, the mantle to someone else. And he, he brought someone to my attention. Uh, I spoke with this person. And so Sean's, you know, pick for who, who would take over the Spicoli role uh, came to fruition and we got this person. Okay, so no hints. Can you give me any hints about who this person is? I, I can't give you, I will say this. There's still a couple more surprises to come, believe it or not. So it may or may not be somebody that you've already seen, but you're gonna have to tune in Friday night to know who plays Spicoli? And then who okay. does Sean play? And any, can you give us any information about who's playing who or what characters some of the other um, celebrities will be playing? Everything is very, very top secret. It's almost like dom a domino effect. If I tell you one person, you're gonna go, well, that probably means that she's playing opposite him. Or The real goal here was, and I think when you're celebrating any kind of great piece of work is, let's play with diversity. Let's play with gender. Let's, you know, it's a celebration of, the, the written word here. So the goal with this one, and then hopefully as we're continuing forward and doing more, is to keep people on their toes and let people play these roles that normally you wouldn't see them in. Okay. Well, we have to address though the casting of the year, the century. How does one get both Brad and Jen involved in a project like this? All those years ago when they parted ways, I was sitting in my living room and I thought to myself, Hmm. What can I do to reunite these two in the weirdest possible way <laughs> for a great charity event? Um, I think once, uh, you know, Brad and, and Jen really understood our, our kind of the mission statement and, and why I was doing this beyond just bringing some levity and some joy, um, everybody just understood that what CORE is doing, uh, Sean Penn's organization, what Reform is doing, it's important work, it's boots on the ground work. And when you've been there with them, like I have, you even more so wanna to participate to uh, bring eyes, bring enlightenment, just you know, have people be able to donate time or something financially. So once everybody got the gist, it was like, yeah, we can have 
a great time for a great cause, causes. Did, um, did they each know that the other was involved in this project? Or oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. You can, <laughs> I wouldn't imagine you'd want to flip the, you know, the live switch and suddenly it's like, I didn't know you were here. Oh, this is, <laughs> uh, no, everybody is, is not only aware, but completely enthusiastic about who else is participating. And, and really the inside conversations has been, I can't believe so-and-so is playing this role. It's, it's been such a blast. Now, I know you want to keep it a secret as to who's playing what's role, but I did hear you mention um, that there's going to be maybe a little play with gender and stuff like that. So does that mean that perhaps like a female actress could be playing a male character and vice versa? Yeah, I mean, there's still a couple of things that, you know, we're, we're toying with and having conversations about. It's, I think it's going to be moving parts probably up until we go, which is also part of the thrill of a live read, sometimes you just decide, hey, why don't I play that part? And you do, and so that, because that's happening, I think more than anything, how it comes together on the night of, it's unrehearsed, you show up, you're kind of at the table with each other in that moment and figuring it out. It's part of what keeps it scary and fun and holy <laughs> and what just happened, I will be at the helm keeping everything on course but I will tell you, the thing that has been the most unbelievable is how many people are DMing me and texting me that I can't believe want to be involved now that we just have too many people. So I'm saying no to people that in my wildest dreams, I never thought I'd say, yeah, no, there's nothing for you here. Oh my God. Has the people that are involved, are they calling dibs on like, hey, I want to play this person, and that person or anything like that? Are you having to break these fights apart? Yeah, fortunately, a couple of the people that called dibs, we were, we were, uh, we were hoping they'd want to do something, you know, outside the norm. So it's it's fallen out of play in the best possible way. And so, what can we maybe do to get uh, Brad and Jen to play a couple role, maybe? I, I don't know. Go into the comment section at the Access Hollywood site and try to up like it, I, I, I'm not sure, you know? If voices are heard, maybe there'll be some, you know, some things switching up night out. But I don't think anybody's gonna be disappointed or, or wanna see who we have set in those principal roles. The way they are right now, I think it's gonna be bliss. Awesome, oh my God, I cannot wait to watch it. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Is there anything that you wanted to add or any like, anything we should look out for when it comes around, keep an eye out for? Uh, if you're one of the biggest entertainers in the world and you want to be in episode two, you can find me on Instagram at Dane Cook and Will Kibitz and try to figure out what we can do next. Well, I'm sure you probably have a wait list going at this point now, right? Yeah, I think, I think the next uh, script, we're definitely going to have to do like St. Elmo's Fire or something with a very large uh, cast at the, the center of it. It's been an embarrassment of riches just the last couple of months and hopefully if we pull this off right you know maybe we can do a bunch and keep people entertained at home with some of their favorite stars around the world uh right here on your screen so no everything is just going to be day of no rehearsals nothing like that or nope just people writing me and saying hey wait a second how do i do this scene it's like a sexual what do i do here and it's like you're giving advice to <laughs> some of these unbelievable thespians and saying, well, I don't know, maybe you could like clap your hands like this and make a sound or it, it's, I, I could probably write a book of preparing how we're going to do this. It's, it, there's, there's every night when my head hits the pillow, I find myself just going, I can't believe what my day was today. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and aside from St. Almost Fire, any other scripts in mind? Well, people have asked me a couple of times, who, who else would I want to do? I love Spike Lee. If Spike Lee ever heard this and wanted to reach out, like do the right thing recast would be unbelievable. I have goosebumps and I'm a Celtics fan as well. Grew up in Boston. So not saying, but you know, I'd love to do that. Quentin Tarantino, Pulp Fiction, big cast, a lot of people. I think we could do some stuff that's really spectacular. And we have a lot of tricks and tools to, to bring you something aesthetically that I think is very cool, very dynamic. So watch Feeling Alive and maybe we'll do some more.